Well, this time tomorrow, we'll likely be getting early poll numbers from what's expected to be a very busy day. So this so-called blue wave, will it bring a tsunami of de uh, Democrats to office, or will President Trump's endorsed candidates prove victorious? The president held his last rallies in Ohio, Indiana, and Missouri today. Cliff Young, president of Ipsos Public Affairs and, and an adjunct professor at Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, joins us now for a last look at the polls. Cliff, it is good to have you in here tonight. Uh -oh, hey tomorrow, huh? All right, it's, it's been a while. We're glad you're joining us. Um, let's start off with the waves. We've heard about blue waves and red waves. Um, the Democrats have made so much about voters coming out and, and really trying to turn things around. What are the polls showing right now? Well, right now we're seeing that both bases are energized, both Republicans as well as Democrats. Indeed, three, four weeks ago, it was purely a Democratic issue. They were energized, Republicans less so. But over the last week or so, both sides have become extremely energized. So we've been talking about these early voting numbers, this massive number of people who have voted early, and there are many states that don't allow that. But here, Maryland, we've seen it. We've seen it in D.C. Does that favor anybody, or is that just, is that just an indication that everybody's jazzed up for lack of a better term about this election actually to be quite frank we don't know uh, we think it's everyone's jazzed up we don't know if people are substituting voting the day of versus voting early we don't know that we don't know if it's an indicator of higher turnout uh, we'll only know tomorrow uh, but without a doubt uh, uh, on average it seems like people are voting early uh, in substitution to voting the day of Cliff, let me ask you uh, I'm just curious what do the polls show are the key issues that that have people fired up that that are sending them out to the polls Number one is Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> uh, it's mostly for Democrats. It's a referendum against him. They're going to polls because of that. When you look at uh, Republicans, it's about immigration. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the president and others have really been hammering that home. In second place for Democrats is health care. Very important, very important in second place. For independents, it's a mix. It's health care on the one hand, and it's jobs in the economy on the other. When you look at some of the issues that were coming up uh, in, in the last couple of days, you mentioned jobs, 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 and the jobs numbers for the president when they came out last week were good, yet what we're still seeing is a big push for immigration on the campaign trail. Is that something that is uh, that, that, that seems to be working for him when it comes time to the polls? Yeah, right now, and I'll use your terminology a bit, it's not jazzing the Republican <laughs> base, job, job. I'm not going to live that down. It's a good look. place, yeah, yeah, but it's really about immigration. Indeed, the caravan, other, the wall, uh, the other sorts of issues related to it really, really motivate that Republican base, um, and that's what they're using, uh, I, perhaps a good effect. Indeed, we've seen over, as I was saying before, over the last three weeks, the Republican base become more energized. Let's talk about some of the numbers in the key local races. We know in Maryland there is the race for government. We've got the incumbent who's been very popular, Republican Larry Hogan versus Democrat Ben Jealous. What are the numbers? We, we, we know that the numbers have shown that Larry Hogan is still in the lead. Does that continue? Yeah, the poll suggests he has a lead. Uh, he has a significant lead. He might buck the trend. Indeed, it might be on the on the governorship side and gubernatorial side. It might be a blue wave, a blue year. Mm -hmm. But Hogan has approval ratings of 60 plus percentage points. A very very good place, and it looks like he's in a strong place going into to tomorrow. And we've been looking at a lot of uh, House races, especially two in Virginia. But I think it brings to mind the fact that you have a lot of Democrats who are hitting the campaign trail and almost seeing it as a done deal that they're going to take over. And and if a anything that the Democrats should have learned two years ago is that the turnout, that's what matters. That, that, that What happens on Tuesday is what matters, not what matters leading up to it. Yeah, it's all about turnout. Uh, for your viewers, I would focus on Virginia 10th. That's Comstock's district. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, it looks like, though I don't want to make uh, any strong predictions, it looks like the House will go uh, Democrat. Uh, uh, that said, um, they're going to have to take key districts, especially in suburbia. Um, and the 10th district is one of those. If they're going to have a good night, it needs to go blue. Cliff, last but not least, because I know we're almost out of, time, uh, out of time here, a lot of folks are skeptical of these polls. I mean, you know, after we saw what happened with the presidential election in 2016, have you guys changed up the way you do things? No, but as you can say, I'm not giving probabilities, am I? <laughs> okay. I'm not as, as certain as I was la in 2016. No, uh, you know, we adjusted our methods on the margins. Mm -hmm. It's, as you were saying, it's all about turnout. We're a little bit more careful in, in being so sort of uh, aggressive about our calls. It looks like the House will go blue. It looks like the Senate will stay red. Probably uh, Democrats pick up some governorships, uh, but we're not going to give exact numbers because you never know. All right. Cliff Young, president of Ipsos Public Affairs, thanks so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Well, thank you so much.